The story begins with a woman named Emily Bronte, collapsing due to illness and her sister Zan, and Charlotte Bronte, immediately taking care of her. Charlotte sees the book titled Wuthering Heights, which was written by Emily. Charlotte asks Emily how did she write it, but Emily dismisses her and tells Charlotte that she does not believe in her capabilities as a writer. Charlotte says that Emily's book is ugly and biased, but Emily continues to dismiss her. Charlotte leaves Emily in the room. The story then jumps back into the past with Emily lying on the grass, building up her story about a captain. Then, she hears the bell sound from her home and she immediately runs down the hill. She sees her family welcoming Charlotte home, who is visiting from her school, and tells Emily that Charlotte was offered a teaching position at the school after she graduates. While walking to church, Emily and Anne continue to build up their story about the captain, but Charlotte interferes and says that they should stop doing that because it's strange and it will draw attention especially since Emily will be starting school soon. At church, the Reverend introduces a new curate named William Whiteman, who then gives a speech about God being in the rain. After Mass, Charlotte praises William for speaking with such poetry, but Emily disagrees and says that there's nothing special about his sermon. William walks into the room and introduces himself to the girls. In the living room, William meets with the girl's brother named Branwell Bronte. Their father, named Patrick Bronte, says that Branwell got accepted into the Royal Academy of Arts and everyone applauds. During the evening, Emily sees Charlotte through the window, asking their father if she can bring a friend to come stay at their home in the spring. Emily invites Anne to continue creating the captain's story with her, but Anne declines her invitation, saying that stories like that are created for children. The next day, Emily confronts Charlotte that she will stay in her room until her friend, Ellen, goes away because she doesn't like to meet new people. Emily also adds that William is not trustworthy, which angers Charlotte. The day after, the three sisters are having fun under the rain, and Emily makes fun of William and Ellen for not liking the rain. This throws off Charlotte and tells Emily that she is an embarrassment to their family and the people are calling her the strange one. Charlotte then runs away. William partakes in a game invented by the Bronte siblings wherein they wear a mask and impersonate a character, while the others will try to guess who that character is. The group is having fun while Charlotte impersonates Marie Antoinette. Afterwards, they ask Emily to impersonate someone for the last round. Emily politely declines, but Charlotte provokes her, saying that Emily won't be good at impersonation anyway. Emily grabs the mask and after some time, she starts to get possessed by their late mother. The possessed Emily starts talking to Charlotte, Branwell, and then Anne. Strong winds start to burst the windows open and everyone starts to panic. William is able to remove the mask from Emily, while Charlotte and Anne scream for their mother. Their father enters the room and asks what has happened. The mask is then buried in the ground. It is now time for Branwell to go to the Royal Academy of the Arts and Emily to go to school with Charlotte to become a teacher. Her father tells her that he's expecting great things. At the school, Emily seems to get lost in the process of learning how to become a teacher. Because of this, Charlotte accompanies Emily back to their home. Their father says that he will send Anne to school in lieu of Emily. Soon enough, Emily overhears Branwell going back home saying that art isn't for him and he is now interested in writing. Branwell and Emily hang out at the top of a hill and talk about their passion. Branwell talks about writing about his ordinary life while Emily talks about how she doesn't like being a teacher and she wants to become a great writer as well. Branwell says that Charlotte is a liar since she sets aside all of her dreams in order to get some love and approval from their father. Patrick tells Emily that he has assigned William to teach her French. William teaches Emily French as they argue about religious philosophy. One time, Branwell isn't showing up for dinner and their aunt sends Emily to go ahead and fetch him. Emily finds Branwell in a pub drinking with several other men. Branwell invites Emily to sit down with them and he asks her to take a sip of his drink. She doesn't like it at first, but eventually gets fond of the taste. Emily and Branwell go home late to the dismay of their aunt. The next day during their French lesson, William gets upset as Emily cannot concentrate. He sees a tattoo on Emily's arm that says freedom in thought. Branwell and Emily develop a new pastime of scaring people through their windows and running away. While cleaning Branwell's room, Emily sees a small container of opium and she uses it. During mass, William notices that Emily used a narcotic and tells Emily that Branwell is a bad influence for her. Emily tells William that she actually stole the opium from Branwell. A surprise William tells Emily that he will tell her father about her behavior. 
The next day, Branwell sees Emily and William having a conversation. It turns out that William didn't tell Emily's father about her opium use. Later that night, while spying on other people, Branwell tells Emily that he saw her with William earlier. He adds that Emily and William have feelings for each other. He asks Emily to, to stay away from William since he doesn't want to help her, but rather he only wants her instead. The two argue loudly that the people they are spying in are able to hear them behind the windows. Branwell and Emily run, but Branwell trips over and he tells Emily to leave him behind. Back in their house, Emily is being interrogated if she's the one that's spying with Branwell earlier that night. Emily hardly denies the accusation, and she is sent out of the room. The following morning, Emily learns that Branwell is being taken away to do some tutoring as his punishment. Emily continues to spy on other people through their windows. During a social gathering, Emily and her father see Branwell kissing a lady. The father asks William to take Emily home before dealing with Branwell's actions. Outside, the rain begins falling forcing William and Emily to wait inside an abandoned house. Emily talks about how people think of her as an odd fish, but William comforts her. They eventually share a kiss, but William stops them because it's wrong for a servant of God like him to do such a moral act. The next morning, Emily's father asks her to write a letter to her sisters about all that has happened to Branwell and that he will be station master instead of being a tutor. Emily and William continue to hide their affairs from everyone as they kiss while Emily is washing the dishes. They secretly meet again in the abandoned house up on the hill, and they have a sensual time. Charlotte reads Emily's letter to her as Emily and William grow increasingly close to each other. They share kisses secretly at different places and during different times. They visit Branwell at the railway where he is working, and Branwell promises that he will be a better person. One day, Charlotte goes home to Emily's surprise. Emily patiently waits for William at their secret meeting place, but William does not show up. When Emily goes home, she sees William sitting around the table and eating dinner. William doesn't look at Emily for the whole night. This frustrates Emily and she decides to go to William's home and ask him what has happened with them. William does not open the door and helplessly stares at the door from the inside. The next morning, William is seen crying as he prepares for mass. Emily's aunt orders her to bring cake during the afternoon tea party that is being hosted by William. She decides to take opium before bringing the cake for extra courage. When she arrives at the tea party, Emily confesses her love to William. William is taken aback by this and he drags Emily outside and explains to her that what they were doing is a mortal scene and God won't be able to forgive him. William also tells Emily that there's something ungodly in her especially on the night when they played the mass game. William says that if Emily doesn't obey his rules, he will tell her father everything that she's done. Emily runs away crying. Emily takes out her anger on Branwell when he's consulting to her regarding his writing. Emily says that Branwell's writing is lazy, unclear, and unaware. Branwell asks Emily if all that she said about his writing is true. Emily does not respond and leaves the room. Branwell, who is devastated, drinks an entire bottle of alcohol. One day, Emily decides to travel with Charlotte to Brussels. Their father is very glad to hear this news, whereas William seems to be surprised. William talks to Emily and tells her that traveling to Brussels is a good idea for her to get inspiration for her writing. Emily says that she doesn't write anymore and she will go to Brussels to become a teacher. William is shocked by what he heard. The fact that Emily is leaving to teach in Brussels slowly creeps to William's mind and he decides to give Branwell a letter asking Emily to change her mind. Emily apologizes to Branwell about what she said about his writing. Branwell dismisses this and tells her that he really is not a good writer, but Emily is. Branwell says that he's able to read Emily's poem and it's one of the most beautiful things he has ever read. When he is about to read it to her, he sees William's letter to Emily instead, asking Emily to change her mind about going to Brussels, but he does not relay the message to Emily. The next morning, Charlotte and Emily are bound to leave for Brussels. William looks for Branwell, and Branwell tells him that Emily said no and to leave her be. William is destroyed with what he heard. One night, Emily dreams about William, the following morning, Charlotte and Emily learn that William passed away due to cholera. They go back home to give their regards. Charlotte discovers all of Emily's poems and tells her that people need to see the poems. An upset Emily dismisses Charlotte. Branwell falls sick as well and as he succumbs to his illness, he gives Emily the letter that William wrote before she leaves to Brussels. Emily reads the letter and cries. As she moves forward with her life, Emily starts writing again. 
she's able to create Wuthering Heights, and reads the novel, and soon enough, Charlotte is able to read it, and loudly cries after she finishes reading the novel. Emily is ecstatic to have her novels hardbounded. The whole parish celebrates Emily's achievement because her novel will be read by the wonderful minds living in London. Emily plays under the rain due to sheer happiness. Before Emily succumbs to her illness, she tells Charlotte that he loved William so much and asks her to burn her and William's love letters to each other when she dies. Charlotte and Anne do so. With Emily in mind, Charlotte begins to write her own novel as well. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.